Thank you. Um, the today presentation um, it's about uh, developing with Map Store. So I will show you a use case where we uh, were able to um, create a custom dashboard using uh, data related to crime location. To do that, uh, we use MapStore, and what's MapStore? MapStore is one of our products, and uh, it's a WebJS client that make, uh, allow the user to create and share maps, dashboard, or just story. But for this use case, we extract the front-end part of MapStore and use that uh, to interact with the GeoServer PostJS uh, backend, um, and using also OGC standards inside this uh, use case. Let's start from the design process. So how we start and think and uh, we, how we um, work on the, the specific use case. We had some initial requirements. That was uh, the crime location data that was composed for the geometry point, the type, so the type of crime that uh, we, we needed to uh, filter then later with application with, and uh, the report date. So this one was our initial data set that we had. And as a result, uh, as a requirement, we needed to uh, visualize uh, this information inside a uh, map and display also additional data around with uh, charts and table and uh, also be able to filter this data based on the property that we have inside the crime location data. These two screenshots show our initial um, work. So it was a simple map and uh, uh, a simple charts done in, in uh, JavaScript. We use a simple version of map store in this case. Behind uh, there is open layers. And, uh, we took the sample data that we had and put inside a PostJS, Postgres server, and started to, to insert this through a GeoServer to uh, play around and understand what kind of OGC service we could use with the front end of MapStore. Uh, in this case, we um, use uh, WFS and SQL view to render the data on the map, and later we'll show you the SQL view and what they are uh, GeoServer side. We use the WPS to uh, process the data and uh, create charts, uh, counters, and uh, uh, tables. And finally, we use also WMS uh, to have a background map with data that we had uh, from OpenStreetMap data source. So this first part show how we uh, start to think and work uh, with the backend side. So we decide to use a PostJS Postgres server uh, database, a uh, GeoServer to provide the process data, and then we uh, start to work with the MapStore framework. So we took MapStore, extracted the front end with the React part, so use the base component that uh, provide, uh, React map component that provide open layers, uh, leaflet, and cesium uh, types, so a library behind, and uh, the possibility to configure additional plugins to uh, the, the application. I don't know if uh, there is sound. OK. Um, the screenshot that you see here is one of the previous uh, experiments that we did with the map, map, MapStore COVID uh, map, where we use MapStore to interact with uh, custom API that were provided and showing the um, data from the COVID um, and with that, we were able to use uh, the plugin uh, infrastructure and architecture to add a custom plugin, uh, such as the counter, the table, and so on. So one of the our steps is to start uh, through uh, sketch or mockups. So we started to draw around how the UI and the final UI should be composed, so the graphic composition, and also start to, base on our previous experience, to enhance with new plugins. Uh, the UI in particular. The filter, now here is a sketch, so something is a mess there, but we, on the top right, we started to think on the interval date filter, and uh, on the top left, uh, the table, how to filter data. And uh, this one was an initial step that then we used to uh, create our UI. Finally, when we had uh, all the three pieces, the database with PostJS and Postgres, GeoServer as spatial provider, and MapStore, we um, uh, put them together inside a, a Docker container, 
Uh, so we were able to share these in different operation system. Next step, so when we finally had uh, an idea on how our uh, infrastructure works, could work, because at that point we did not know the final result, but we had an idea on how to structure this, we start to prepare the data. Uh, as I mentioned before, it was a, it's a, a crime data, so it was a, a, um, data related to crimes, and uh, to generalize and normalize the table that contained this information, we call that event. So that could be applied also a different type of uh, um, data source. The important value that we need for the event are the uh, a categorization property, a date, so a time, and a point geometry. For the crime, we also uh, add a region, because the crime has uh, usually, for the sample data that we use, a uh, um, administrative uh, region to work with, so an ID where we can associate this region. So the polygon that represents the region could, uh, could be used to create the final visualization. So Evans region was our um, normalized uh, table. Here there is an example on how we, uh, we use the New York Open Data Portal. We found uh, the data related to the complaint where there are some uh, fields uh, that fit our use case. We pre filter the data to make sure that only the categories that we needed were there and also to uh, choose a specific uh, time range. And finally, we export as CSV. The same we did for the region. In this case, we look for precinct. And uh, for the precinct, instead, we download a format that could contain uh, um, special information. So a GeoJSON or a shapefile that could be then imported on a Postgres, PostGIS table. Once we had downloaded all the data, we needed to add an additional step that was the, uh, let's call normalization, so a SQL script that through the Docker entry point uh, allowed us to read the data and convert in a normalized um, structure. These are the two structures, one for Oh, one for the uh, event table. So the event table uh, um, for our normal, normalized uh, structure should have these, uh, these fields. And uh, finally, the region table. These two tables are important because uh, later we uh, were able to connect to a GeoServer through the data sources that GeoServer allowed. One of these is the PostGIS connection. And, uh, we were able to configure the layer to provide the layer to the client. So the data store that we had was uh, event and region, but wasn't enough for the visualization because uh, we had point and uh, polygon without uh, um, logic that could show uh, the count inside each of these uh, elements. So what we did, we used uh, uh, CQL view that a way that uh, server provide to configure a post uh, um, data source. And uh, with that, we could apply a statement uh, written in uh, CQL. And with this statement, uh, we uh, combine the two data sources. So we have the event a region. In this case, uh, um, creating a SQL statement, we create a precinct with a count for each crime on the map. Instead, for other type of visualization that we experimented, different SQL, same entry point uh, data sources. We create hexagon with the PostGIS uh, hexagon green uh, grid uh, um, function, and uh, then join and found which point uh, and count them inside each of the hexagons. So we obtain uh, um, sort of heat map visualization through hexagon. Same, th same thing with the uh, square. So with the square here, we, we, we created the, the, with a polygon geometry through a bounding box that we had, and uh, in basically intersect the point from the event table and obtain the count for each visualization. So this completes the second step. So we had the data, the data sources. We uh, connected the data sources to Azure Server. We created the layer needed in the um, final visualization that could be provided as this one through WFS. Uh, 
or also WMS. Uh, the experiments that we did was mainly focused on the WFS uh, through JSON uh, rendering client side. Finally, we have the Map Store Events Tracker application. This application uh, is not the usual Map Store, but we uh, created a project uh, through Map Store and extend it to, uh, be, uh, to contain a new plugin, so custom plugin, and use only the framework front end to be able to connect to the uh, API that your server provide instead to the uh, default and custom uh, um, backend. And finally, we publish also a, a custom bundle. Uh, this bundle uh, is under the Map Store Events Tracker package, and uh, this, uh, package provide a script to create a template, a folder template, with all the configuration file if you want to extend with a new dashboard the repository that we have created. I'll show you later also the link if you want to try and, uh, the demo. So this uh, um, configuration that are uh, provided by the Map Store Events Tracker uh, allows to um, connect to different table and different layer to the, to the uh, GeoServer. In particular, the assets and the configuration file that I want to highlight are the local config, that is a common with the product of Map Store, and uh, it's used to um, configure the viewer, so decide which plugin should be visible in the dashboard in this case. We call it viewer because in Map Store we have the map viewer, but in this case we have the dashboard. So decide which component we should include or exclude in the final visualization. Then we have the map JSON, a configuration to change the map that is used as background. And finally, the viewer config that is specific for the events tracker for this, for this custom dashboard that allows you to configure to a different set of layer on the endpoint. Uh, let's say that you want to add a new uh, set of uh, events and region, you can connect, create a new map store tracker folder with the client and connect the new configuration. This is the UI, the final UI that, uh, um, that we get after this first iteration. At the center, we have the uh, maps is a component, a core component of Map Store uh, that will provide uh, some different visual, visualization that could be selected by the legend slash um, visualizer selector, let's call it. So in this uh, sort of uh, stop motion, we have uh, the, the difference that we can select a different um, visualization. Then there is the possibility to query the, uh, the properties on, uh, on the layer. This is done client-side through, we have JJSON client-side, so we can structure in the tooltip uh, the result as we prefer without additional request to the server. That's the reason we choose uh, for this experimentation uh, the use of JJSON instead of WMS. On the right, uh, we added uh, this custom plugin that uh, is a counter plugin, show all the category from uh, the data that uh, we have from the crime. So we, we select five, in this case, five category. So we decide to extract only these five from the original uh, crime data sources. And uh, this card show the count, total count for each uh, of these value, and allows you to click on them to select, and all the viewer, the dashboard, will synchronize uh, based on the filter and selected category. So as you can see in the charts uh, below, there are all, uh, now two lines uh, that represent the two selected category and type. At the top, we have a normalizer plugin that, well, um, where you can select if the data, now we can see count uh, that is uh, the actual count, and uh, we can uh, select the different data. We have uh, a charts, and uh, the charts, uh, main chart show months uh, through crime. The filter to select uh, the timeline range that we want uh, to um, filter the data, and it synchronizes all the dashboard. Finally, the table, where all the region, in this case, present are selected, and uh, you can select uh, each of these uh, region and get uh, a detail highlight 
of the content. So you can compare the total to the single region precinct. If you want to try this demo, you can uh, download uh, the repo Events Tracker. There are documentation there, uh, and there are some sample data from uh, the New York uh, Open Data Portal and the Denver Open Data Portal um, uh, website. These are some uh, improvements that uh, we want to propose. One is included to extend, in the, probably next iteration, 3D views and generally um, improve the performance of the client. And that's all. Thank you.